All right. Just gonna kind of give you all a rundown of what I'm rigging up today. As you can see in my box right here, just gonna grab me half ounce weight. This is a half ounce. As you can see on, let me get on my little bag right here. Half ounce Titan tungsten. That's what we need. That is what we need right there. Let's see what we got. We are going to get us a Gamakatsu 4 Alt. That's it. That's the 4 Alt. Flipping hook. Not bad. And that's all we need out of that hook box. So this is 25 pound Sunline Shooter on a 7 foot 6 point blank custom built rod that I built myself. A little half ounce weight. A little floor off four off flipping hook this I'm, I'm actually like pretty dang excited to be out here today pretty warm though might have to take my dang sunline hoodie off and fishing a regular short sleeve t-shirt it might be the first day of the year where i've done that i get a lot of questions on do you snail or do you not snail if i'm using a straight shank hook at all i snail i don't care if i'm throwing a small little straight shank for a with a straight worm like the missile baits quiver or some kind of little straight tail worm like the 48 i'm going to snail if i'm using a straight shank hook and today we will be fishing with some of these colors that i've gotten that i'm super like excited about using but i have not used them yet so this is a missile baits wicked crawl these are only available at tournamenttackle.com and here's one in wicked gill i think i'm gonna put on the wicked gill because it's so unique and so different I have it fished with anything like this, and the water is a little bit dingy. Got some accent colors to it. Pretty cool, pretty interesting looking deal. I'm actually gonna rig it. We'll put the we'll put the blue side down, which is not the way that I would normally rig stuff. I almost always rig everything with the dark side up. But we'll rig it with the blue side down today. Try to catch the dang bass. Flipping around like that today. A little half ounce weight, a little D-bomb. Looking good, looking good. It's all good already. I've already got me a white Punisher swim jig up there. If you can see that, and I've got an ace jig over there laying underneath that motor guy, Tour Pro Pro motor, trolling motor. And then black and blue is one of my standard color swim jigs. Oh, just took some pliers to the rear end. That's okay though. Black and blue, standard color Punisher swim jig. Caught a lot of fish on this recently. Threw my tires and the, my scissors in the bottom of the boat real quick. So I ain't gonna be able to get those very quickly. But this is a, just a black and blue Punisher swim jig. Taking this off, I'm going to put on a color that I don't throw a lot. I'm actually going to put on a quarter ounce. I don't throw a quarter ounce too often. But it's gonna be a quarter ounce Punisher swim jig. And I like to keep some heads that are without skirts on them in the truck, almost always. Usually keep a couple of them in the boat too. Trim the weed guard down to where it's just over the point of the hook. So I'm still going to have the same amount of weedlessness because it does, you know, protect the point of the hook. But a little more finessey looking, a little more compact. Rigging up me a green pumpkin swim jig today for a change. Don't throw green pumpkin too often, but we're going to try it. I just tie a polymer, regular polymer knot. This is 50 pound Sunline X Plasma braid. No problems with this stuff yet. Love this braid. It's one of my favorite braids I've ever used. Got it tied up. Cut my little tag in. And then another thing that I keep, I keep a box of skirts just in the main colors that I throw. You can see this. I've just got, you know, all kinds of weird colors. Some colors like this red I don't even use, or this one I don't use that often. I normally stick with a lot of the traditionals, black and blues, green pumpkins, Bama Crawl, stuff like that. So we're just going to take the little green pumpkin today. Or should we use the green pumpkin from the Ace? What do you think? What do you think? I think we'll go donk. How about donk? Yep. Let's go with the donk. Donk is quickly becoming one of my favorite colors ever. I mean ever. And because I'm swimming this, 
and the jig will be kind of swimming a different way than normal i'm going to put the accent color down or probably like halfway on the back side so normally on my jig i'll have the accent color on the top but because this is a swim jig and the fish will be below it primarily i'm gonna put the accent color on bottom right there in the bottom little left bottom left quarter panel right there and then boom we got us a swim jig rigged up i don't always keep my skirts in the boat but for right now i do have my skirts in the boat because i'm doing a lot of experimenting and changing around trying to get confidence in some other deals so i'm gonna take this we leave the a skirts just a little bit longer than we have to typically just so that if you want a little bit longer of a jig you can have that and if you don't it's as simple as taking a pair of scissors and cutting it down a little bit so now I've got me my little quarter ounce green pumpkin swim jig right there. I'm gonna find me a trailer to throw this thing on. Leave me a comment what trailer you like to throw a swim jig with. I'll go try them. I'll give them all a try, try everything that's new that uh, everybody else is using. But for me, got me a 3 8 ounce right here, just in case I wanted something a little bit, to fish a little bit faster or a little bit deeper, a little bit later. But let me put these up. My boat is a mess right now. We will dial this in for Pickwick though, I can promise you. Let's get back here see what box my crawls are in looks like some crawls right here see what we got i like the missile baits twin turbo a lot if i'm fishing really fast but for this i think i want something that catches a little bit more water keeps the bait a little bit higher in the water column so let's find us something that's green pumpkin with a lot of drag on the water let's see what we got Looks like we ain't got nothing. Looks like we ain't got nothing. As far as the green pumpkins go. Back to the truck. Grab me a couple trailers that catch a little bit more water so I can keep the bait up in the strike zone over the top of the cover where i think the fish are going to be either extremely close to pre-spawn or possibly a couple of them spawning right now because i know there are a few bedding on this lake right now so i really want to make the bait hang in the strike zone for a little bit longer than i normally do so that's why i'm going with the quarter ounce the natural color like the green pumpkin looking like a bluegill and then a trailer that really catches a lot of water so that's the difference that's why i don't have i haven't always pushed the brands that i actually throw a ton it's because I want y'all to understand why I pick what trailer when I pick it more than just what trailer I'm using. I'm just blindly telling y'all, hey, go buy this trailer. I don't like doing that. I like explaining to y'all exactly why I pick exactly what I pick. So for this instance, I want a trailer that's going to catch a ton of water. So so you've got. OK, so this is not something that I typically do, but this is how I have all my stuff set up. I have a file, fizz needles, um, wacky rig tool garlic marker super glue everything you want these little gamakatsu i think this is actually a 3500 size box keep all this in my compartment so that i can keep everything exactly where i know it i never have to dig around looking for super glue like i've done so many times in my life or digging for garlic dye which hunter uses this the most i don't really use that a ton but let's try it today so just going to cut down my old trailer a little bit i'm gonna go ahead and put it on the bait because i don't want to dip it and then have to do it later so I'm going to go ahead and put it on the old swimming jig. Let me just measure it out, see how much I need to cut off. I like it about right there, so I need to cut off to about this little ridge right here. Should be good, should be good, should be good. Rig this thing up. All right, so pretty cool thing that Untamed came up with. The owner of Untamed came up with this actually before I was even with them. So pretty unique kind of a deal two untamed they actually have a four-way quad keeper pretty cool pretty cool little deal you just slide the bait up on the hook get it to where you want it and then you slide up over the quad keeper and you just pinch it right there on top of them two pegs and pinch it right there on top of them two pegs and it'll hold your bait there i mean for longer than any other um keeper that i've ever seen so it'll really hold your bait in place so that you can fish for a long time without having to you know use a new trailer or super glue it i still super glue you know especially in the mornings before a tournament or something i'm going to super glue all my baits now if it's like three o'clock and i gotta weigh in at 3 30 or something yeah my bait's probably not gonna get super glued back on there because you know i just don't feel like it's 
that important to have it super glued if you're only fishing with it for an hour because that quad keeper will hold the bait in place. So when I'm getting everything ready, I do super glue it. If I'm in a hurry, I don't super glue it. And it seems like it holds really, really good. So got a little chartreuse on the back of them tails. Got me four point blank rods rigged up. I've got three seven three heavies right here with all kind of untamed jigs on it. And then I've got a half ounce weight four out gamakatsu hook and a tournament tackle exclusive D-bomb color. Let's ride up this river and catch us a daggum bass. Let's go. I'm so ready to go catch them. Very optimistic. Just the way the day feels today, the way the sun feels, it just feels like things are happening. Fish are moving. The animals are awake. So water temp is 55.7. Let's go catch it. Water's pretty clear. So, thinking that green pumpkin's probably the color today because water is so clear. So, let's just see what's up with it. What are we doing though? <laughs> don't like fishing with truck keys in my pocket. I don't know how y'all feel, but I like being quick, nimble. I don't have anything in my daggum pocket. Little quarter ounce punisher see what's up oh yeah looks good coming through there yes sir looks blue gilly to me looks blue gilly to me this is just a little do nothing pocket with some Scattered grass, isolated stuff in here, some isolated wood. It's just a pocket that water temp can really warm up in. Seems to be one of the types of places the fish spawn first on this lake, so. Oh, pickerel. That didn't take long, <laughs> but it's a pickerel. But a pickerel gets up there where the bass are and uh, eat about the same thing the bass eat, so. If he'll stop flopping, I'll grab him. He's a slimy sucker, though, so chill, fam. Oh, got him. A little pickerel. It's a nice little bonus. Look at him. He's a little fat sucker. Nice little bonus bass. A little Alabama chain pickerel. Did I say bonus bass? Nice little bonus fish. Well, I guess when you're a bass pro, a fish is a bass to you. But nice one. Oh, Ray dug in a little bit. Maybe mess up my next cast. I'm telling you, I'm feeling it with that little chartreuse on the tail. I can really see that coming back. Give me a little bit of bit of confidence when I'm looking at that thing flapping through there. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Oh yeah. This thing is hanging in there in their face. Oh, I had one come out. He's still sitting there. I see him. Is that another pickerel? Another pickerel. I think I saw him come out and eat at it, and he was still suspended right there in the in the little stalk of the reeds, water willows, whatever you want to call them. On the old pickerel pattern today. What's up with that? What's up with that, fam? Oh, tangled up. A little stump, a little isolated grass up in there. Not isolated, but a little clump of grass. Mmm, ought to be one coming out of some of this. It's good looking clumpy grass. Mmm, should have busted one through here somewhere. Just up here cruising around. Water tent back in here, 57. Just trying to play I Spy with a big old female, you know? Uh oh, looks like a little bed right there, but it's hard to tell sometimes. Got to tell you, if there was an Olympic sport for dogs barking at you, I'd be at least a bronze medalist. 
I get barked at a lot. A ton. I even have a cat bark at me every now and then. I'm just getting real out here. Dogs don't like you coming close to that little sea. Well, there he goes again. Maybe that's two. That might be two. That's two points for today. Two dogs barking at you. Look. There he goes. The dog barking Olympics. Gotta think. I'm undefeated. Undefeated. I'm the dog barking champ. Alright, I ain't feeling it. Look at that thing though. That thing's pretty. A little snack. This little spot looks pretty dang good. Got some clumpy grass. Got some current right there. And this is just out of the current. Got a lot of stuff washed up on it though, which is usually not good. It's just not super clean. That one didn't care. Oh man, he came from a long way to get it. God, dog. Damn, it was just a two pounder, but man, he came from a long way to get it. Mm. Just didn't get it good. I guess he probably had this chunk, this trailer. Oh, please bite like that all day. Please bite like that today. Check out this little Punisher jig. Big old hook in there. Sticks up way past the hook eye. Yeah, it ain't the jig's fault. I promise you that. That sucker just didn't get it. Because when they get it, you don't miss them on this thing. It's really probably my fault. I just didn't give them quite long enough. Can't help it, y'all. I like setting the daggum hook, especially when I watch them eat it. So get a little jumpy sometimes. Just get a little jumpy sometimes. It's okay. We all do it, and if you don't do it, you learn. There's two types of people. People who tell you they set the hook too early, and people that lie about it. Man, ain't really happening. Ain't really happening. Seemed like it was gonna be. But it ain't. Two bites by bass, two bites by pickerel. I mean, it just died, so. Like that SpongeBob thing where it's like two hours later. So had me a couple bites on the other trailer that I was using. And now we're gonna try a different trailer because that's when we're out here fishing, having a good time. I like to be able to try whatever I want to try, you know? So let's see, should I cut this down a little bit? I think I am. I've never done this before with this trailer, but I'm actually gonna cut it down just a hair shorten them up a little bit and see what happens i'm gonna power pull down before i run over this tree because i do want to catch me one flipping on this tree though so i'm just going to run him down straight out the other side straight out the nose and run him up on this quad keeper here just about like that pinch him pinch him a little bit Boy, that looks like a dang snack for one, don't it? Yes, sir. And I'm going to chartreuse them up a little bit, too, because chartreuse them up on the last one, last little trailer I had, put a little chartreuse on there, and I can really see my bait coming back to me a little bit better. Something for me to key in on, gave me a little bit of confidence. I like seeing my dang bait, you know? So I'm going to chartreuse them up just a hair. That's not enough. Let's get a little more Ooh, juicy looking. All righty. Come on down here. Looks pretty good. I'm going to retime real quick. And uh, that's it. Simple. So if you're wondering what, uh, not I tie on braid. I tie the, I tie the bass fishing knot. I tie a daggum polymer. Palomar, polymer, whatever you want to call it. I mispronounced almost everything already. So, Palomar knot, I think that's what the smart people call it. 
that's all I do for braid. And one thing that I've seen people not do and ask me about, do you still wet the line for braid? I do because, I mean, even though braid does have a little bit of a strength to give, I use 50 pound braid because I want 50 pounds of strength. So I really don't want the line to be burnt at all because I don't want 40 pound braid or I'd use 40 pound braid. So now if I can dig around here. All right. Another thing that I do is I burn the tag in. Now that tag in will not fray. It's back in my little equipment box. And we're ready to catch a bunch of bass on this thing. Tell me that don't look good. That old tree right there. Nothing around it. That's all they got. If there's a fish around here, all he's got is this little tree. So. Get my old quarter swing jig up. This sucker has got some flap. I may need the smaller size trailer. This is a big one. Oh, I missed one already. How long did that take? Two casts? Had a pickerel come get it? And what's the deal with all the pickerel today? There's a bunch of them that gets the pickerel spawning. But Dems is up there. Them things is up there. Well, that one was running. Fished up to a stump and gone with it. Look at that, hooks it on that ace. Everybody was like, look how they ate that jig. Well, they all ate it like that. Look how far back this one actually hooked him. That's the key. They all eat it deep. Just usually, you pull it out to the lips before you ever get the hook in them with most jigs. Dang it, was not recording. I apologize. Just caught this nice spot of bass on the ace, but he ran so fast straight under that dock and he went right out the dang alley that I skipped up in. I mean, I set the hook and he came out. I couldn't even catch up to him until he got to the boat. I got an eight to one metanium right here. Seven three rod, I never could catch up to him. I mean, until he was at the boat, literally. Ooh. Got another one under there. Spot a bass one cast, large mouth the next. They ain't up there spawning. You see that 20 pound shooter? I ain't afraid to throw it over crossbars or whatever. Just sling it up in there. I mean, same spot too. Oh man. They under there today. They under there today. Little one with messed up lip. That's why I missed him the first time probably. He's got a weird mouth. Got him on round two though. We'll rig me up another, another little ace jig. Get my skirts. Take a look. We're going to go with pure green pumpkin this time. I'm going to throw these extra heads in this skirt box. Even though that ain't where they go. Y'all don't tell Hunter I put stuff out of order. 
She she likes a little order in her life. Can't blame her. Cannot blame her. So I always put the skirts on. Myself, just so I can mix and match and kind of get what I want. I keep some in here already made up. But I also just have a couple that I can do myself. If I decide that's the route I want to take, I can kind of customize it a little bit more. Cutting this thing down super small. I actually also trim the weed guard a little. So the weed guard just covers up the point of the hook. That's the only thing that's really important is covering the point of the hook because obviously if a tree hits right here or something, it can't stick it. So you just want to make sure whenever you push it down, it covers the point of the hook good. And then I got a little bitty snack. But I can set the hook hard because it do have a big hook in it. And we can catch us a bass or two. I'm just putting on a chunk style trailer. Get my little Gamakatsu box of super glue. Quad Kiefer does an awesome job, but that little drop of super glue pretty much is like having insurance on it. That trailer's probably gonna stay there till that jig is just absolutely beat up and destroyed, no skirt left on it. So. It's a team effort between the quad keeper and the super glue. Well, that's not how you tie a bait on. Run your line through, run it back through, then drop your ace jig off the line and start over. On the back of a shampoo bottle, just do that until you need to repeat it. Did it again, dropped it again. That time the skirt was looking out for me and got tangled up. Appreciate that skirt. Double pits and knot, three tag ends, but it is a very, very strong knot. And boom, ready to rock and roll. Little green pumpkin thing, dude, looks like a little snack for them, don't it? All right, so. That was actually a day where I just went fishing on a small little local lake close to the house. Had a good time, caught some fish. I really um, was motivated to make a good YouTube video that day, so I spent a lot of time talking, and Hunter thought it would make a good video. I didn't plan on using that much talking, but if you like that style of video, leave a like and leave a comment. I if feel you, like we were like on FaceTime with you or something while you were fishing. Hunter felt it. like she was in the boat with me, so she really liked editing that video. She really liked uh, the way that I talked and everything, so if y'all like that, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know you like it, and if you don't, just say shut up and catch them. So I appreciate y'all guys watching. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, turn the alerts on because we are right now in Florence, Alabama getting ready for Pickwick which is coming up next. You don't want to miss it, so go ahead and subscribe. We'll see y'all in the next video. I got to finish rigging.